Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you ready for God's word today? Praise God. You know, like the prophet said, the word of God is like fire. <laughs> In me, praise God. Oh, we bless you, Father. Thank you for your grace to minister truth. And above all, thank you for understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hey, are you ready to make requests for your daily bread? Release your faith now as we declare. Join me, join me. I'm releasing my faith. Are you? Let's do it together now. Say, Father. I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Expect a miracle today. I'm expecting a miracle today. And it will surely come. Why? Because God loves us. He loves us. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Now then, I was sharing something with you yesterday. Very important. Now, please, please take time to listen to this message again and again and again. Like I've always told you, share, help us share. Share with everyone you know. Let them get blessed like you are getting blessed. Praise God. All right then. So now I read the scripture yesterday. We're going to continue from this. It's verse, verse, verse 19, Galatians chapter 3. It says, what purpose then does the law serve? It says, it was added because of transgression. Then it says, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. So what promise was made to the seed? God said that in the seed of, of Abraham, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now that's the Abrahamic promise. God said, Abraham, I will bless you and I will bless your seed also. So now, after that covenant was made, God saw the law was not given at the beginning of the covenant. Now I told the covenant have two parts. Okay, so you keep your parts, God keeps his parts. A covenant has two parts. It makes it stronger. At first it was a promise. Then to make it stronger, God made a covenant with Abraham. Now, the covenant means you can demand that promise. And, and if the person doesn't fulfill it, if all the, the everyone, have, if you have kept your part of the covenant, the person is bound to fulfill his. Now, that's the reason if we don't do what is right, we will be judged because of the covenant. Now, if we do what is right and God doesn't do his own part, God will be judged. It's because of the covenant. Praise God. So who's going to judge God? Now, because we know he is ever faithful. That's a constant thing about him. But you see, even him puts accountability on himself. I told you when we we're talking about the, this covenant, he had to bring forth witnesses to his covenant. Even though he knows he will be faithful. Even though he knows he will not forget. And what was he doing? Number one, he's showing us how to do things. Don't just say, I'm, I'm the spiritual person, I can never do wrong. No, put, put, put things, levels of accountability in your life. Nobody's saying you must do wrong. But hey, you must show that, look, I'm serious about this. So because I'm serious about this, I didn't just say it. I have put things in place to ensure that I do what I say. So God brought forth witnesses. He brought me up. Every time God makes a covenant, he puts a witness there. And you, you know, even sometimes he uses the heavens and the earth as his witnesses. Because those things are recorded. They are recorded. So, now, here is God. And man began to fail. Brothers and sisters, all the while they were in Egypt, the covenant existed. It existed. But no one was teaching them. Allah, <laughs> 
Yeah. All right. So some things are coming to my spirit. Let's let's calm down and take it gradually. So then, because they began to fail in the covenant, God now see the laws were not God's wisdom from the beginning. The law became a means to an end. So God looked at these people and said, look, these people will not follow my ways naturally. So what do I do? In order to make them keep my ways so that I will fulfill what I have promised Abraham, I need to put some laws in place. So God began to put laws. And that's where even laws were added to Titan. Titan didn't come with the law. The laws were added to Titan. You see that now? So when God begins to say, if you don't tithe, you will pay a certain percentage. Right? Now that's the law that was added to tithe. Now, the counter productive aspect of that now became this. People began to fear the law more than they feared God. But remember, the law was not a permanent thing that God fixed. The law was supposed to guide them. I think Galatians said it. Verse 24. It says, Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ. Can you see? The law was our tutor to bring us to Christ. Mm, how? The law became our school. Old King James they called the schoolmaster. What's the job of a schoolmaster? Schoolmaster creates orderliness. Schoolmaster is not the same thing as school teacher. Schoolmaster creates orderliness. You know, if people that went to the old school, so they have this um, schoolmaster, and it, he's more feared than their regular teachers. Most times, um, if you went to boarding house in those days, not these days of uh, Ajabota schools, in those days, you feared the hostel master. Now why? His job is to create order. Anybody who's going out of line at the moment they mention, you will go before, ah, they behave. See that now? Now, it says the law was our school tutor, our schoolmaster, to bring us to Christ. Now, Mm. verse 25 let me finish verse 24 to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith but after faith has come we are no longer under a tutor why are we no longer under a tutor we don't need one anymore why don't we need one anymore does that mean we can now behave anyhow no the real tutor is now here <laughs> <laughs> yes you see people think that the blessing of Abraham in Christ is the Holy Spirit no sir mm. the Holy Spirit <laughs> the Holy Spirit in us, how do I explain this to you now in the simplest form? I love to make everything so simple. The Holy Spirit in us today is what keeps us in place to fulfill the covenant that God had with Abraham so that 
the blessing will come. So, God says, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Okay. Then God began to release the Holy Spirit to everybody, whether Jews or Gentiles. No restriction. He began to release the Spirit to everybody. So, now what's the Holy Spirit supposed to do? There is a promise God made to Abraham that he wants all the families of the earth to be blessed. So, if he says all the families of the earth to be blessed, then only the Jews are now the ones that are custodians or that can keep the covenant. Then there's a problem. There's the restriction already. So, God began to release his spirit to everyone across the board. Anyone who believes in him receives the Holy Spirit. Then their lives now, having received the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Spirit of God will not lead you against God's will and purpose. And God is not making any new will or any new purpose today. He has already finished his work from the foundation of the world, sealed and delivered. Brothers and sisters, the job of the Holy Spirit today is to help you walk in the light of that covenant that God will fulfill the blessing of saying to it that all the families of the earth be blessed. So I'll give you an example concerning sustenance. God wants to be God wants to be invo involved in sustaining everyone in the earth. Every, when I mean everyone, everyone, not just this fellow, no, everybody. God wants to take care of everybody on the face of the earth. Isn't, isn't that what he planned right from the Garden of Eden? There was enough, enough food in that garden. To sustain Adam and Eve. And as they continued increasing and multiplying, God was making enough. Say, how do you know? Oh, I know. I know. Now, because of sin, all those things stopped. Not because God couldn't produce again, but because man was not walking in the lights for that production to take place. So you see the children of Israel in the wilderness and one day they got tired. They said, look, we are tired of this manna and every day manna, manna. We want to eat meat. God said, okay. You know, God wasn't angry that they asked for meat. No, he wasn't. Go read the story. He wasn't. It was Moses that God was angry at for doubting that he could supply meat to the whole nation. You see, you know, Moses thought to himself like, you know, when they, when they came with that uh, obnoxious request, you know, like Moses, we want meat. Moses looked at them and said, are you out of your mind? Because Moses was looking at all the animals that they left Egypt with. They're like, man, these animals, if we kill them now, look at these guys. And Moses just brought it up to the Lord and said, can you imagine these people? They're not even grateful. You're giving us man. Now they are saying they want meat. And God says, uh -huh. give them it. And Moses said, hey, do you know how many we have? God said, and so? No, no, no. Where are you going to get meat to feed all these people? Because he was looking at all the countries they have passed. Man. And God looked at Moses. God said, Moses, do you know who you're dealing with? Moses said, we are more true. God said, Moses. Oh, Moses, you have tempted me. You know what? They are not going to eat meat for just one day. They will eat it for a whole month. Only meat for a whole month. And, and God says, look, they will eat it until it comes out of their nose. Meaning, now, that's, that's, that's a, a phrase, not for punishment. It's a phrase to say how satisfied. You know, when you see, you will eat something and it comes out of your nose. So Moses said, Okay, let's see what's going to happen. And the Bible said, God caused quails from the sea. Who 
who knew that that measure of coins were in the sea. You know, say, oh, uh, be careful, uh, some animals are going extinct. Oh, let us preserve some animal. You don't know where animals, all the animals are kept. You don't know. You think you know. You don't know. You don't know. Until one day, you know, some, sometimes we think some animals are already extinct. We know until one day they show up. And you wonder where did they come from? Do you know their creator can be hiding them? Are you the creator? Do you know everything? Can you actually make extinct what God have created? Relax. Relax. So God fed them with meat. They ate until they were satisfied for a whole month. I'm telling you, God can take care of the whole world. All these little food shortages, you know, they, 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 there's drought, there's this. Come on. Do you remember? Do you remember? That God gave Egypt enough grain for the whole world at a certain time. There was drought everywhere in the whole world, but Egypt, by the wisdom of Joseph, was able to save grains that supplied food for the world in the seven years of famine. Think about it. The prophecy didn't go around the whole world that there's going to be famine. But it came because God will never do anything. He's not that wicked. In your year or your season of drought, instead of crying, there is somewhere that he has created supply. Find it. Find it. Oh, I just lo lost my job. I'm going to suffer until I get another. No, 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 no. Before you lost that job, Relax. There is a channel of supply God had created. Find it. Why? He's faithful. Ever faithful. You cannot fault him where faithfulness is. It is your lack of understanding and knowledge that is affecting you. Don't judge your lack of under don't judge his faithfulness with your lack of understanding and lack of knowledge. What you don't know, they say might be killing you. But the truth is, you can find out. And when you want to find out, don't find out just from a man. Find out from him. Can you take that matter to the Lord and say, Lord, what have you created for me? What, what in this season, what have you, what provision have you made for me? His intention is to see to it that all the families of the earth they are blessed. Now the reason he supplied the Holy Spirit to everyone is so that the Holy Spirit through us see, will keep us in place, guiding us day by day to keep the covenant of God. And as we keep the covenant of God, then God is free to release his blessing all over. Brothers and sisters, there is a blessing. You know, I know there is predictions that world economies are coming down. But listen to me, it's part of the plan. It's part of the plan. The world is going down, that Christ be exalted. But you that is Christ, what is your role? Your role is not to see that everything and how to make money in the world. No, sir. Your role is to see that the blessing that God promised Abraham, which is supposed to be fulfilled in us, is saved every part of the world how do i get engaged in that i'll share that with you tomorrow praise god oh thank you lord jesus we bless you we just bless you too. lord release on everyone who's watching me right now that spirit of truth that will take each one by the hand and begin to guide them into all truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.